Hello, it's me, Kat Corelli, and uh, this is episode 246 of my Cat Vibes series. Today we're painting my friend, whose name is John, Jeanne, in Russian. Um, uh, she's my old friend, uh, back from Moscow, and um, she just posted this wonderful, heartwarming reel uh, a while ago, already like a month ago, I guess, um, when there was, um, when it first snowed in Moscow, there was snow. So, I've seen that reel uh, on her Instagram, and uh, I just thought that I really wanted to paint this, because I, I so loved this happy expression on her face, this look on her face, uh, and that smile, and... Um, as juxtaposed to the rather dull-looking buildings behind her. So I thought it would be um, a cool little portrait to paint, and um, I'm using that as reference, that reel. And uh, as you can see, I didn't spend a lot of time actually um, sketching anything out with a pencil. I rather felt like I just just wanted to mark up the territory, let's say, and then move on to the underpainting and uh, move on as quickly as possible. Because um, I know it's a matter of approach, I guess. Some painters prefer to go for a very detailed sketch, or they go for a very detailed drawing before going into an underpainting even. And I just think that, you know, I like the at least in this particular case, I like it more uh, to go in as soon as I can with the underpainting and to throw in some color and start sculpting the shapes rather than getting too carried away into the nitty-gritty of a future painting. Um, as I mentioned on my previous episodes, I, was, I think I was talking about this for some time now, when I was talking about the detail vs. Um, vs. the overall uh, feel of the painting, the shapes, the big shapes, the the lighting, uh, these kind of things, I tended to have, I tended to be very imbalanced in that regard because um, naturally I tend to get carried away with the little nitty gritty details. It's been my plague. Um, for basically my whole life, uh, up until recently, relatively recently, when I started actually oil painting. But previously, whenever I was dealing with watercolors, where I was dealing with uh, ink or, you know, ball pen drawings or something like this, or even pencil drawings, I used to get too carried away too early on with the nitty-gritty little details. And, um, I had to, I mean, there is a, there is a, there is a whole lot of levels of obsessive about this and a whole lot of reasons for that. Uh, now, let's say there is some psychology involved here, I think, and uh, past traumatic experiences and obsessing over certain things and uh, trying to be all perfect and trying to take note of everything and trying to um, trying to pay attention to every single little aspect of the project and that was overwhelming. Uh, last time I did something like this it was exactly a year ago uh, or a little more than a year ago in, in uh, late 2022 when I was doing these ball pen drawings and I was doing them you know all in bon ball pen mostly uh, going for plentiful detail and lots of little strokes and uh, texturing and layering and all of that and it was so so freaking tedious and I, at some point I guess I realized that I'm indulging not the best trait it, it doesn't let's say it doesn't bring that much satisfaction it doesn't give me uh, the kind of result that I want to really accomplish with my art so you know, and getting this out of the way, well, the reason why I'm actually saying this is because 
in order to acquire this kind of looseness and being able to um, to appreciate sculpting larger shapes and larger form and bolder color and all of these things while at the same time paying some you know considerable attention to detail in order to accomplish this new paradigm this new balance I had a I had to first work out a lot of things with myself. Uh, so there is a lot of brain work that went into this. It didn't really have anything to do with painting. It didn't really have anything to do with, you know, studying uh, drawing or color theory or anything like this. No, it had to do with the overall mindset and with making a few adjustments. Um, trying to heal from certain things, uh, trying to uh, trying to disengage in certain activities, trying to uh, break the old patterns of thinking. Uh, it's been a lot of work, let's see. And then as a consequence of all that work, now um, it all starts to translate into my art. Now it all starts to translate into a more loose style of painting. And now I'm not obsessing with details anymore. You see, I'm just getting, it's like, what, uh, a third of this video. And I'm still not even painting the eyes yet. And I'm not obsessing over every single tooth. Now, the old version of me, from like two years ago, three, four, five, I would have been already obsessing with, with the eyes. Or with the teeth. And I would be, actually, that would keep me terrified. Because um, I think, actually, that when you start to obsess with small little details too early, it becomes overwhelming because uh, it's too many things to look at at once. You start thinking about, you know, the uh, the eyelashes and about the brows and about the shape of the uh, eyebrows, and the lips become so difficult and the teeth become so difficult and the shape of the nose becomes so difficult and you are just overwhelmed by all of this converging little problems which you see but which you really don't have to think about early on uh, and I think in the past I was just overloading myself grossly overloading myself overburdening myself with too much information thinking about too many things at once uh, and doing it at the same time and getting worried about all of this too early on See what I'm doing in this painting, I'm, it's not that I don't care about the details, no, but I'm just building it up in a different fashion. I'm just making sure that first I got the, uh, the more generic, the, the broader strokes right, that I got the flow of the paint, that I got, that I sculpted the head, that uh, the relation between uh, the values is correct that it doesn't look cartoonish that uh, it is recognizable that she's recognizable that John is recognizable but also that he that she has the right expression on her face and that her anatomy is correct see what I'm doing so I'm paying my attention right now is on these other things but I've completely uh, completely blocked out any worries about the small little things right now. I don't worry about them. I've trained myself to overcome these thoughts, these intrusive thoughts, and um, to just not give a damn about it. And everything all of a sudden becomes a lot more pleasurable. Painting becomes, instead of being a, sh uh, instead of being a chore, Instead of being a uh, instead of being a tedious process, it becomes a rather pleasant uh, process. 
Yes, still challenging to a certain extent, but it becomes a very pleasant process, you know, once you just stop worrying about all the wrong things. So, you see what I'm doing to the lips, you see what I'm doing to the eyes, I'm just touching them up and I'm slowly but steadily bringing them up to the next level, up to the next level, up to the next level, in little incremental steps. I'm not rushing anything, I'm not trying to get the right eye perfectly right. I'm not trying to get the left right, the left eye perfectly right. Neither am I obsessing over her nostrils or the shape of her nose. Really, oh, I just corrected, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little, a little bit of pushing here and a little bit of pulling over there. Same with her lips. Uh, she has a distinctive uh, shape of her lips, and she has lipstick. She's wearing lipstick. So I want to find that balance where, on one hand. Uh, you can see that there is lipstick, but on the other hand, you also catch the lighting because it's street lighting and she is uh, She's excited and she's a young woman so and, and she's not really freezing cold. She's not freezing cold. She's excited. So there's blood pumping through her cheeks and into her lips and through her face and in her hands. So on one hand, there is the cooler uh, lighting, the street lighting, but on the other hand, there is the underlying uh, blood flow under her skin. So I need to catch that. I'm more concerned with these things. I'm not really that concerned with even the shape of her lips right now. Uh, I'm more th thinking rather along the lines of like capturing the correct the correct values, the correct expression, the correct tint of what's going on right under the skin. And uh, sometimes I'm painting a little thinner and sometimes I'm using, in this particular painting I'm using some impasto medium by the way. I'm using it for her jacket, I guess this is a jacket or maybe it's a parka, I guess it's a parka most likely. Uh, it's kind of a, of an interesting color. It is mostly cool pink slash magenta, but there are some darker red undertones to it. Um, so the point being is that I am almost careless as far as details at this point. And uh, this makes the whole experience a lot more pleasurable. And I think that it translates a lot better into a more expressive painting. So, <laughs> you see what I'm doing. I'm using the impesto medium and I'm just layering paint, one layer, the other layer, and trying to get the correct, um, the correct color. It's not a it's not a one color. It's kind of a composite color, and uh, even though it's a simple park cut, I still want to keep it interesting. Uh, the one thing that I found kind of difficult in this painting, uh, more difficult than the face was uh, was her hand. In part this is because um, and it's a totally different shape but it's like how do I put this? I'm using as reference an Instagram reel so she's taking a selfie, she's filming herself so she's, with one hand, she's holding her parka. With the other hand, she's most likely holding her phone. Um, the problem here are the proportions. Because, you know, her left hand, uh, the one just, that she holds her parka with, it's kind of closer to the camera since she's filming herself, so the proportions are really distorted a little bit. And I kind of know this, but on the other hand, you know, if I um, make it, would I have made it smaller, a little smaller, um, 
that would look weird too. So it's like this um, kind of a weird conundrum that I was contemplating here. What proportions should I use? Should I reimagine this as if it is not a selfie? And try to imagine what would it look like in real life proportions? Or should I try to retain more or less the proportions um, as they appear within the context of an Instagram reel? You know what I mean? So that was one thing. Another thing is... Uh, trying to match um, the colors on her hand and make them comparable to her face because on her face she's wearing makeup she probably has some foundation uh, her hand is you know it's still her skin but it's not covered in makeup so it has a should have a slightly different shade. Now, it wasn't immediately obvious or immediately clear or highly detailed in that uh, Instagram reel. So I had to basically just make up a whole bunch of stuff and imagine what what her hand would look like in real life. And I hope that I guessed it correctly. You know, um, there is a lot of specifics. Um, what does her hand look like? First of all, the color of her skin specifically the color of her skin she has you know she has a slightly yellowish skin um but then there are two more factors the street lighting is the big one and then the other one is also uh she's wearing that parka so the reflected like fr light from the parka uh also gets onto her hand and now to make things even more complicated uh, like I said, just like with her face, she's a young woman, she's excited, she's not really cold. So on one hand, her skin would react to the cold weather, but on the other hand, she has blood pumping through her veins, young blood. So there you go, you have four factors. The street lighting, the reflected light from the parka, then you have the cold, the ambient cold weather, and then you have her bodily reaction to the cold uh, and it should show through the skin in, in a subtle way because, you know, here's the thing, I'm not painting a hyper-realistic painting so, since, since it's not the case and I'm going for a more of an impressionistic approach, right? I have to condense these concepts and present them in a more loose uh, and bold fashion but um, you know it, it shouldn't be over complicated basically I'm not going f I don't have the strategic depth of going for too many details so what I have to do you see what I'm doing right now with a hand right I'm trying to capture the through you know perhaps uh, a few more strokes, a few more brush strokes here and there. I'm trying to give the cooler grayish shades and then the warmer tints and then the reflected light and then a little bit of reds, a little bit of grays, a little bit of violet, a little bit of this and that, a little bit of highlights. And I'm trying to sculpt that hand, you know, to imagine it, what would it be like in that situation without overpainting it. Because just like in music, uh, I don't want to over-mix a song. It makes it stale, it makes it dead, basically. When you just over-process everything, you, know, you, you just over... You stifle the mix. It, it doesn't breathe anymore. It's just dead. You know what I mean? Same, I'm applying the same exact approach here in painting. I don't want things to get stale. I don't want to over-stretch or to over-compress or to over polish her hand it should be the same kind of loose as her face because her face is painted in a very loose fashion that's what keeps it lively at least in my opinion so I'm trying to do that same thing um, to her hand and paint it in that same fashion Ultimately, it boils down to a few definitive strokes, but they have to land in the right place. And 
well, let's say it wasn't, it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. In part because, like I said, there, there was this factor of proportion. Um, I was kind of divided on this issue. Should I, you know, keep it uh, as if it's um, as if it's um, an Instagram reel, or should I try to make it more realistic, as if it's actual, the actual proportions uh, from real life? That kind of was throwing me off a little bit. Plus, I moved her hand as compared to the reference photo, screenshot rather. Um, I moved her hand, so she, it's her hand is not as close to her face as it's in the original screenshot. And now I'm just adding up, uh, building up some more paint on her parka and giving it more, giving it some more definitive pink cooler pink on top of the warmer, deeper red uh, tints. In essence, I like I was like I just mentioned mixing in music, right? Uh, I'm trying to apply the same concepts. Everything that I learn in music, you know, about music engineering or production, generally speaking. Mixing, I'm applying those same concepts to painting as well, and it seems to work very well. And the other way around as well. Um, not getting too concerned with too many details in the beginning. Early on. You just do, you know, the whatever you have in mind, whatever task is at hand. If I need to lay out the drums and throw in the bass and get all, you know, the riffs right first, the rhythm guitars. I'm not going to be thinking about leads. I'm not going to be thinking about vocals at that stage, right? Right, makes sense. Same thing here. I don't need to worry early on about, you know, the perfect positioning of her eyes. And I think that it's actually okay if they are slightly asymmetrical. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. That's not the point. It's a lot more important to retain the expression on her face and the overall feel. It should feel like it like it's her. And that emotional context should be there as well. That emotional expression. And then there is some more color and some deeper shadows as well. Now I'm kind of emphasizing what is already there. Um, and I have to add a few elements because you know you don't, you don't see everything in an Instagram reel after all. And you, I couldn't see it. Uh, I don't know if her hair were done. Was she wearing like a cap underneath her parka or, or no? Uh, it was kind of hard to see. Um, as you can see, I'm also very loosely painting these buildings because they're not the focal point. And as I'm starting to do this, to paint these street lights, first I think that probably the tone of the sky is more or less okay. But then I all of a sudden realized that actually it is too light. And it needs to get darker. In part, I need to do this because I need the buildings to sit deeper in the ambient light against the sky. But I also need this darker uh, sky tone in order to emphasize my subject. Uh, Joan and her parka and her uh, her face which is lit up by all the street lights I need to emphasize this so I need to uh, make the sky considerably darker also I need these lights you see I'm painting them again right I need these lights to pop more and they will pop only if I surround them with you know darker context so all the buildings and all the background, all of it has to become a little bit darker. But basically that's it. There's another like two minutes of my painting process. Uh, basically I'm in the very end right now. Uh, on a different note. Gosh, as per usual I'm using cat, using cat vibes to make some announcements. I guess 
that that has become the new normal. So um, the next fourth single from my Gehenna or Kenham album is coming out on January 10th. Uh, that song is called Gala Dark Singer. And uh, then after another four weeks, I will release the next fifth single, which will be called Bitch Please. Um, I want to thank everybody for streaming my music. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much. You know, it really doesn't matter where do you stream my music. Is it Spotify? Is it Apple? Or is it uh, YouTube? If you buy my music, it certainly helps. I appreciate it, really. Uh, I also appreciate it when you leave me comments and tell me what you think about my releases, about my music, or about my painting. Thank you very much for that. If you need, uh, if you want any of my paintings, any of the paintings that I'm painting here in my YouTube videos, if you really like something and you want to buy it, reach out to me, leave me a comment, we'll talk about the price. Uh, they're all available. They're all available for sale. Uh, so next single is coming out on January 10th. There you go, there's John. Oh, there's John, my old friend. Thank you very much for watching. Mm, there will be another lyric video coming out, a guitar playthrough slash lyric video coming out soon after this Cat Vibes, the next one. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for being with me. I love you all, and you will hear me on the next episode. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Meow.